Okay, this is a video that accompanies the uh, longer review video. It's about 22 minutes long because that was made uh, a year ago. And I just wanted to emphasize a couple of additional points. One is that that video is optics at the end of the semester because that semester I taught it at the end. Uh, and this year we had that at the beginning of the semester and we were able to do a couple more things in optics that I wanted to make sure you at least considered when you were studying. One is the idea of the uh, light intensity. We emphasized that quite a bit this semester. And if you recall, if there's a light that is a point source that's emitting, the, the light intensity is equal to the power of this source that's emitting it divided by 4 pi r squared, where r is the distance from the source to the point of interest. All right, so this, as you can see, is the surface area of a sphere, as you can imagine. There's a sphere here, and all the power that's being radiated out is being distributed amongst the sphere. So the further out you go, the more washed out, if you like, the power gets. So this is uh, for a point source. And then for uh, a line source, we also had power uh, the power to point a certain distance r away from a line source, if you had a linear source of light, the intensity in that case was proportional to uh, one over the one over the distance here. In this case, it was it was actually equal to the the uh, light intensity per unit distance. So we needed to have a kind of like the charge density that we had. We have a light intensity per unit distance here, and if we'd use that and call it, let's say, lambda. It'd be lambda divided by 2 pi r, since r is the circumference of a circle here. And the, the bigger r is, the bigger the circumference is. But it doesn't get as washed out with a line as it does with a point, because the line, uh, the cylinder, has a, you're, it's just this distance over which the power is being dissipated at. So it goes as 1 over r. And then, of course, for a plane, We talked about the fact that the light intensity uh, is uh, does not change with distance away from an in, in, from an infinite plane, and you actually saw that in a lab activity. So that's really all you need to know, and it's it's analogous to the electric field strength for a plane not changing. It's uh, it's uniform, as we say. Okay, so that is uh, light intensity review. And the other thing that is not in the other video that I wanted to mention is the concept of diffraction. And this was also in an early lab where if we shined a laser through a, a series of slits, if you remember, there's a double slit and there's a single slit. And if you shine light through it, you end up getting a pattern in the wall, the distance. And we talked about the fact that if you made uh, th that this, well, uh, the spacing between these here, so here's how I am quickly updated the drawing here. Let's say we have red light approaching these double slits. These are two slits right here. What you're going to get is you're going to get a pattern on the wall where you have these dots that are evenly spaced. Uh, this is for two double slits separated by an appreciable distance, d. Appreciable meaning, let's say, a half a millimeter or a quarter millimeter, some small amount like that. We get the, these slits in the wall. Uh, I'm sorry, these light, these light uh, dots on, on a, distance, in a distant wall of fringes, actually, they look like, if you recall from the lab. And then the spacing between them was given by this equation here, where y sub n is the spacing from the n equals 0 fringe, where you take the, the n, multiply it times the wavelength of the light. So red light has a longer wavelength, so it would have a bigger spacing here than would a shorter wavelength, like let's say green light. And this equation we, we saw in lab gives you the spacing between these slits on the wall over here. And that how different wavelengths of light, if you change the wavelength, you'll change the spacing. Similarly, if you change this, the, the, the spacing between the slits, this d, you would also change the spacing between these dots here. 
And this is actually a technique that's used to identify what wavelengths of, of light are in a sample that we're looking at from a star or from a, a chemical that's burned or something like that that produces light. You can tell what wavelength of light it is using methods such as this, or using the technique of diffraction. You can also use it to identify, figure out how thick a, grain, a, a hair is. That's what we did in the lab. Okay, so that was the other topic that wasn't mentioned in the other review. But besides that, uh, pretty much everything that I talked about, we discussed this semester. Some of the things uh, the other year may have been discussed a little bit more than this year. So keep that in mind as you're doing, as you're looking at, at what I talked about. But the, con the content is essentially the same. So I'm, I'm maintaining that video since I think it's pretty comprehensive on everything else. Okay, good luck on the final.